they clearly don't understand how a small boutique fitness facility can manage, you know, manage the flow of people and, and control the environment in a way that will make transmissions much less likely. You know, it just became clear that that was the case. So, you know, we put together a, um, a group that ended up being about uh, 40 gyms, uh, the owners of 40 gyms. And, uh, you know, we put together a letter asking for a meeting with the county exec. And it was on the basis of, you know, um, boutique fitness needs to be treated differently than big box gyms like Gold's or Planet Fitness. Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to Shit Trainer Say, a regular podcast brought to you by the trainers of Catalyst Personal Training. Uh, and today I have a special guest. I have Ted Theodoropoulos on the show. And Ted uh, owns four uh, burn body boot camps here in St. Louis. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I having somebody in my gym that owns burn body boot camps? Well, because Ted was the, uh, was the guy who organized all the small group fitness owners when we were having to shut down uh, and got us uh, our case out in the media and got it before the St. Louis Health Department, before the county executive uh, to talk about why small group fitness should not be lumped in with big box gyms and the precautions that um, we take to keep our members safe and why we're safer than a big box gym. And also he's currently uh, compiling data He's organized all the owners. We've got forums, we've got Facebook groups, and we're compiling data on COVID transmission rates in small group fitness versus the general public, correct? Yes. Yeah, so Ted, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. So let's take us back to the COVID shutdown and, um, and how you realize that there was a severe lack of understanding of the fitness industry by the powers that be, meaning the health department and the, uh, the politicians, and, as, and why they were lumping us in with regular gyms when they shouldn't have been. Yeah, well, so that was uh, the kind of the driver that got us motivated to organize was um, as, so we were shut down in St. Louis County March 17th um, in early, early June, um, actually, no, I guess this was maybe the third week of May, uh, some restrictions started to get lifted. I can't, I don't remember the exact sequence, mm -hmm. but as, um, you know, we started to see- so they things, opened casinos before they opened gyms. Right, yeah. and that, that was a big problem for us. So casinos, I believe, opened June 1st. And um, I think what ended up happening, uh, we raised a lot of hell about that. Um, I think they, they let them open maybe in, St. Charles County. I think they kept the ones in St. Louis County, or at least the one in St. Louis City closed. But yeah, so there was talk of opening casinos, and we're like, man, this is, they clearly don't understand how a small boutique fitness facility can manage, you know, manage the flow of people and, and control the environment in a way that will make transmissions much less likely. You know, it just became clear that that was the case. So, you know, we put together a, um, a group that ended up being about uh, 40 gyms, uh, the owners of 40 gyms. And, uh, you know, we put together a letter asking for a meeting with the county exec. And it was on the basis of, you know, um, boutique fitness needs to be treated differently than big box gyms like Gold's or Planet Fitness. Because, you know, when you walk in the door, um, to a, a boutique gym instructor led, mm -hmm. you, you are, you are guided through the entire process, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, at, at burn, uh, it's burn, burn bootcamp. There's no body in there. Sorry. That's all right. Um, so at burn, we, uh, we have a raised exercise floor that's built on foam blocks. You know, 90% of our workout happens there. So we, we tape six by six grids on, we call it the floating floor, on the floating floor. And then we kind of guided people through the gym, had them wash their hands on the way. Um, they walked around and got into their squares. We had equipment that was, had been cleaned and sanitized that they picked up on their way to their square. When they were done, they would drop it off in a staging area and exit. We did touchless check-ins so nobody touched an iPad like they normally do. Um, and 
and then after everybody exited, we closed the doors, we sanitized the equipment, um, sanitized the, the cubbies, and uh, you know, once we got everything cleaned up, then we'd open for the next the pump camps. So, you know, when you look at how that's managed versus you go to, you know, Planet Fitness where you walk in, you check in, you can go do a little cardio on the treadmill, then you can go lift weights, and then you can go stretch, and there's no, it's, it's not guided, it's just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those guys are doing a great job managing it the best they can, but it's just, it's just different. It's right. apples and oranges. So, we felt like we should be evaluated through a different lens big box gyms and that was you know how that was the basis of the case that we made yeah uh and i agree with you 100 percent because when they come in here we put in this um kind of proactive air scrubbing system that reduces that produces these hydroxyls and it's like uh it's a hydrogen uh, peroxide molecule that um circulates in the air and on surfaces uh 24 7 that uh kills covid right uh, and then we have the fogger that we use to fog uh, between every shift. We clean equipment between every um, client. Uh, and then we're guiding clients through. Um, trainers are wearing masks, all of those things, things that you won't get in a big box gym. So 100%. So were you, um, were we successful in that case? So uh, I think there were some successes. The ultimately what happened was they invited us to a meeting. We, you know, we got in front of the press and uh, put some pressure on them to meet with us. Uh, you know, Sam Page was there uh, virtually, um, and then Spring Schmidt from the health department. And then, you know, it was my understanding it was just it was just me meeting with them. You know, representing those forty small gym owners. But um, uh, the CEO of Club Fitness was there, and uh, I can't remember the name of the other big box uh, gym. But anyway, those two guys were there. So they kind of evaluated us together. They didn't really separate us out. I, you know, I think that they just don't really have the understanding to really do that effectively. So um, I'm not sure how this is going to play out the second time. But, you know, I mean, Sam Page was a client at Fitness Edge, right? So he, he, he works out. He understands at least some things. Right. Department of Public Health is really the one who's driving the bus, uh, by my best estimation, just seeing how the dynamic works. And, you know, Sam Page is always deferring to the Department of Public Health. So um, I don't know what their experience is. Based on my conversations, I'd say very low. Yeah. You know, probably don't have a very good understanding. Um, you know, just you can tell by some of the questions and by some of the restrictions that they initially proposed. So I'm not sure how it's going to play out the second time. I mean, I don't know if we're going to get closed down or just uh, just have additional capacity restrictions. And we'll, we'll kind of have to see how that plays out. Well, can you tell a little bit? You were talking about the article that you you recently read uh, that has kind of a sweet spot in it, yeah. and then also uh, talk about the data that you're trying to collect um, so that we can get ahead of whatever shutdown may be coming. Yeah, so there was an article published this week that uh, I, think, I think it was the journal Nature, but it, it appears, don't quote me on this, that it was maybe peer-reviewed. Um, whatever it was, it seemed credible, and it talked about some of the types of places where transmission is more likely to occur. Uh, restaurants, gyms, you know. Uh, things that were, weren't really much of a surprise. Yeah, and I think they're le leaving out what I've read an uh, article that said the, the super spreader events here are they're blaming youth sports, mm -hmm. schools, um, and small gatherings. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And what they didn't do in this article is that they lump gyms together again, mm -hmm. right? So I can tell you that you know, pre COVID, we had a couple thousand clients close to it. And um, we, ha I don't know how many, we track this, I have the data, but I mean, a couple dozen maybe members between June and today have raised their hand and said, uh, or, or trainers, less than three dozen would be my guess, and said, uh, you know, I'm COVID positive. Every scenario that that happened, we asked them, you know, when were they, did they know when they were exposed? 
were they symptomatic and when did they when did they test positive and then we would go back and let every person know in those in the, we call them camps who attended camp with somebody who could have been put at risk and then we asked them to let us know if they end up getting tested and test positive so of those let's just say for round numbers you know three dozen people um we have had three dozen out of how many i mean we'll think about it if we've got let's say let's say we have 1500 clients now and we uh we do 13 camps a day um we have really high you know 85 90 percent attendance so i mean tens ten thousand just totally doing back of the napkin math. Mm -hmm. So of those 10,000 opportunities for transmission to occur, low single digits, and by low single digits, I mean probably, you know, five, six. Um, I gotta get, I gotta get my hands on the, on the actual data, but it's really, really low. If you look at that as a percentage, you know, it's infinitesimal. Yeah. So we're doing a great job. Um, you know, I know guys like you are doing a great job. We're and the reason that we're doing a great job is because we're able to manage it. You know, the big box gyms they have to manage it very differently. Yeah. So I really want the county to look at us and evaluate us differently than they do big box guys. Whether or not they do, I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I know because we've had two confirmed COVID cases: one staff, one client, um, and we have had. Um, outside of those two confirmed cases that weren't co contracted here, we've had zero transmission, uh, to my knowledge, inside of Catalyst. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. With, so um, you said you're uh, preparing that data so that you can present it to the health department and the county officials to, again, attempt to separate or, um, or segregate small group fitness from big box gyms. Yes. Because the data is going to show that we're safer. Well, I, you know, the thing is, I don't know how the big box gyms would demonstrate whether or not there have been transmissions. In it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you go into Planet Fitness and there's 300 people in there. You swipe your card, you go work out, you go home, you find out that you're COVID positive. You let Plan of Fitness know, for example, do they tell all 300 people? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they do. I have no idea. But mm -hmm. what are the odds that that would seem a bit inefficient because I may have just been in the corner and only been exposed to three of those people. It seems like they'd be telling their customers almost nonstop. Right. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. of just the scale. Right. So I don't. Same I, thing with like a Costco or yeah, Sam's. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You know, the reality is that I, I feel like we are way safer than the grocery store. Yeah. It's not even close. Like, we manage surfaces a thousand times better than a grocery store ever could. Right. They've got so many things that people are touching. We have, well, we've been limiting people to, like, one piece of equipment. They put it in a staging area. That gets clean. We clean all the surfaces where they put their, you know, their coat, their cubbies. All that gets clean between every camp. Like, we're way better than the grocery store. There's no mandatory six feet of distance in a grocery store. You walk by somebody in an aisle, that's not six feet, right. not even close. Right. Um, and then contact tracing. How do you do contact tracing in a grocery store? You right. don't. Right. Like we have a much better story to tell. If grocery stores can demonstrate their safety, um, I mean, granted, grocery stores are very important. We have, we need them. Yeah. Um, but we need gyms too. Right. For different reasons. Right. You know, that sustains us grocery stores sustain us physically, gyms sustain us mentally. Right. Um, and physically. And physically, yeah. yeah. Like the immune system. And right now, it's more important to uh, mitigate underlying uh, causes as much as possible. Sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the mental health impact of this is immediate. Yeah. Right? You shut gyms down, it's like, man, people are instantly, I know I was one of them. I couldn't go work out. And, um, you know, when we were shut down, not even in my own gyms. Yeah. And, man, my mental state took a really bad turn. Um, tried to do things like go for walks. But, you know, I liked some intensity. And I got some joint problems. I can't run. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I need some equipment and need the camaraderie. And, uh, yeah, I'd say that if, you know, Costco can open, 
can stay open, then then gyms, at least small boutique gyms, should be allowed to. Yeah, as long as you're taking the proper precautions. Right. Yeah. Um, so, what do you see um, as this long-term solution? And when I say long-term, I say the next 12 months for uh, for gyms and for people to know that uh, small group fitness studios are safe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess really the the thing is to get the word out. You know, like. For us, I mean, I, I would anticipate that until you know, hospitalizations start to decline, we're going to continue to operate in a limited capacity, right? That's not mm -hmm. going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe spring when, when weather warms up. Yeah. A vaccine should be on the horizon, you know, by then for sure. Um, yeah, how widely available, that remains to be seen. But, you know, as the weather starts to warm up, and um, you know, vaccines start to become available, and people start to learn how you know instructor-led facilities are managing risk. I feel like that's really what's going to carry us forward. Yeah. So just getting the word out that we are safe, and here's why. Exactly. Yeah. Like on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. I really appreciate it. It was nice meeting you. Um, it was kind of a weird way that we met, but I'm glad we did. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it because I know you're a busy guy. You got uh, four gyms that you're trying to operate during COVID times. And uh, so I appreciate you taking the time and stopping by and sharing the information with the listeners. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.